Hello everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Long time no spontaneous chat. I feel like my videos have been very sporadic as ever. It is what it is. Um, but today I I want to talk to you a little bit about like it's kind of a a little bit of a life update, but don't click away. It's just a little chat because I think I've been living in Japan now for about a year and a half. I don't know where the time is going. It's going so fast and uh, I can't seem to catch up with anything. So I thought I'd have a little chat and just talk a little about what's been going on, give a little bit of an update, talk about things that have happened since the last time I've given an update. Um, and you know, just like mark the moment, like one year and a half, give or take. Uh, this is going to be very spontaneous and improvised, so I hope I can try and make sense of my thoughts. But this video has been in my head for the past few weeks and I feel like now is the good time to get it out because I have a little bit of free time. I'll explain why. If you have not been following me on Instagram stories, maybe you don't know what has been happening recently. Things have changed a lot. For one, Last week, I graduated from Japanese language school, a uh, very big deal for me because obviously I came to Japan on a student visa, went to a Japanese language school to learn Japanese. I am in no way fluent in Japanese, even though my diploma says like I was taking advanced level classes and that's the level I graduated at, I still feel like I'm somewhere an in intermediate. Um, yeah, I. From now on, I'm going to be self-studying, and uh, that's a little scary, but anyway, graduated from Japanese language school last week. I feel like I've been released into Japan without like my cushy sponsor, uh, which was my Japanese language school. Like They take care of you, they do the paperwork for you, they, they can answer your questions if you have problems. Like My school, I think, was like one of the better ones? That's, that's just my feeling, one of the better ones around because I've heard like horror stories about other schools that really don't care at all about their students like if they have a problem, like, deal with it by yourself kind of schools and I've heard schools that are more hands-on so I feel like my school was like in the middle but in the good side of the middle they did help but they did also like cause a few issues that I've mentioned like when I wanted to apply for an extension and stuff it was... Pfft. A whole thing, but we're cool now. We're okay. Um, I'm glad I picked that school. Um, yeah, all in all, positive experience from that school. There were some teachers I didn't really care for. There were teachers that I found absolutely fantastic at that school. Um, I think I made a vlog of my last day at school, but I don't think it will have come out by the time this video comes out. So yeah, anyway, my school was Tokyo Galaxy language school in Chuoku. I'm finally giving out the name in case anyone wants to come to that school through Gogo Nihon. That's one of the schools that are available through that service. If you have any questions about the school, feel free to leave it in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I'm trying my best to answer every single DM. It might take some time though, but feel free. DMs are completely open. So what's next? I have been working as an English and French teacher while going to school, that was like my baito, my part-time job as a student and they have, well I've asked them if they were willing to give me a sponsorship for a visa once I graduated and they agreed even though I've only been working there for three something months which was very kind of them. I applied for a visa maybe a month, like even less than a month, actually I was a little late but about a month before graduation, I was able to gather all the paperwork, applied for a visa. It's it's one of those visas where the teacher job falls into, it's like one of these wide categories visa, like humanities, engineer, and something specialist visa. One of those, I'll write it here because I don't remember. It's that visa, so I can teach. Applied one month-ish before graduation, and then I had like the period now between my graduation and when I received my visa where I was not allowed to work because basically I don't have a status, I don't have a visa. So that was a fun period uh, of time, <laughs> no work, kind of wondering when my visa is going to come. But 
my visa has arrived. I went to collect it at immigration. I have my visa. Yay! Uh, I did it. I get to stay in Japan for longer now. So I'm just talking with the work people to figure out what kind of schedule I'm gonna have, but I think they're gonna be very strict and I'm gonna have to work very long hours and very late into the night and um, I'm glad I'm getting to stay in Japan but it's also bittersweet because I feel like I kind of sold my soul to the devil schedule-wise and work-wise in order to stay in Japan I don't know how to express it without sounding mm, inconsiderate and um, ungrateful I hope you can understand where I'm coming from the super grateful and so pleased that I get to be here but also like the other side so yeah that is the main update for the one year and a half mark is that I'm gra I've graduated from Japanese language school and I'm moving on to the next chapter which is the new visa where I'm going to be teaching full-time and hopefully figuring out how to keep drawing and making content and like actually enjoying Japan and not being like a zombie I don't know if you've seen that anime adaptation Zombiaku um, 100, 100 things that I want to do before becoming a zombie where it's just work 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 that's what I'm afraid of I don't want my continued Japan experience to be work 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 so I think I hope I can figure shit out anyway that is the main thing. More updates. Let's think about the categories. Uh, financially, everything really, really sucks. Like, really, really sucks. I know they've sucked before. I'd say they still suck as much, but I'm starting to feel more stressed about it because my current salary doesn't cover my rent and I'm like really scrambling to make ends meet. And now that I'm doing like this job full time and I mean the teacher's pay is really really not that good I'm sorry it's not that good the yen is really weak I'm kind of stressed out about the future I feel like am I gonna be able to juggle in order to make things meet and also the other thing is that in November I'm pretty sure that I'm going to go uh, back to Belgium for about a week and right now I can't afford it but I really have to because um, as most of you know my grandfather passed away back in June I was not able to go back to see him one last time I was not able to go back for the funeral for various reasons the biggest one was that I was getting a visa extension a student visa extension and I, I, I couldn't fly back at the time and now like the, my grandparents house because my grandmother died and then one year later my grandfather died now their house is being put up for sale and that house is very very important to me it's basically my childhood home it's like where so many of my best childhood moments are and without getting too emotional I really want to see the house one last time before it gets sold even though it's gonna be emotional and hard I think I'll regret it my entire life if I don't go back and see that house one last time because to this day I still friggin regret not being able to say goodbye to my grandfather so yeah anyway <laughs> mm. so that's one thing that I'm gonna be like really trying to save up for but I think that I'm just gonna have to put everything I have right now into that plane ticket and that hotel or BNB or Airbnb uh, thing and I'm just gonna have to do it yeah I hope it doesn't screw me over but money is money and this is an important thing yeah oh gosh heavy moment guys i'm really sorry about that but it's part of the news uh so yeah i'm struggling financially but i'm doing my best uh no pressure at all you guys you this is not like a request for you to donate anything but if you do want to contribute a little bit to help with life out here i do have a patreon um, I do have a direct donation and I still feel so weird about saying this out loud I do have an OnlyFans page because uh, sexy stuff does sell and uh, I need it, I need the money anyway, just like, let's just skim over that one thing that I have done for the first time since being in Japan and that I do want to talk about is I went to a clinic 
for the first time i have been putting it off because i have not heard very good stories about japanese clinics that's one thing and i am not very good with anything medical i don't like doctors i do want to share this experience but i want to give a trigger warning because uh, i went to a ladies clinic for one and it was kind of a little bit of a traumatizing experience for me and maybe talking about it will be a traumatized will be a traumatizing experience for some other ladies or people with a vagina so feel free to skip right if you're still here let's go let's tell a story so i went to a women's clinic because i wanted a checkup normal and also i have been having irregular periods and i was a little worried so i just wanted to make sure everything was okay but i wanted obviously a clinic that was foreigner friendly and that was able to speak at least a little English because I, much as I do understand a little Japanese and I'm able to communicate a little in Japanese, if it's medical, it's a little more tricky. So, did my research, heard a lot of good things about this clinic. It's called the Ebine, Ebine Women's Clinic in Shirokane. I actually saw like some another girl on Instagram mentioned this clinic and say oh she had a really good experience yada 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 so that's what I decided to go with did my reservation online it's actually not that difficult so that's really good the receptionist was really really nice that's why I'm so frustrated about what happened after because the receptionist was really nice very fluent in English clearly studied in America like complete American accent, very helpful, very nice, had to fill in some paperwork, show my insurance insurance card, go to meet the doctor and she's just very snappy and okay you wanna do you wanna check this, you wanna check this, okay I'm gonna do this exam, do you give consent for me to do this exam? Very fast and kind of broken English but it's okay, I understood. She tells me to go to the next room, the examination room like not much of a dialogue she just checks okay you want to check up you want to you have irregular periods okay we're gonna do this this, this exam no conversation at least in belgium the good doctors will have a conversation with, with you they will ask your history they'll ask about your concerns they'll, they'll ask questions you was just like okay let's do this go to the next room kind of like in and out kind of thing um go to the next room there's another very nice lady doesn't speak english but she explains to me to like remove everything including my skirt sit on the chair she gives me a towel to put over myself and then i wait and then i wait for a very long time sorry this is a motorbike i wait for a very long time i can hear the doctor on the phone and i feel like i wait at least 10 15 minutes on this chair butt naked and i want to kind of explain the chair it's kind of like an office chair you're just sitting but the bottom is kind of like a toilet seat so like your ass is out so if you picture an office chair like this you're sitting on this part but there's a hole in the middle like in this part there's a hole so your legs are rested but your butt is is properly out so it's not very comfortable to be sitting in this position for a long amount of time if you have a <laughs> If you have a hemorrhoid problem, it's not going to be comfortable at all. But she was just like on the phone, which seemed to last forever. And no one was coming to be like, hey, it's going to be a couple more minutes. Maybe you want to like sit somewhere else or like, I don't know. I was just sitting by myself in this chair. Anyway, doctor arrives. Uh, no apologies. No like Japanese. Oh, matase. Like, sorry to keep you waiting. She just arrives and immediately swivels the chair that's another thing i had done my research because i am anxious i want to know what to expect and the thing i read online about japanese like obgyn things is that the chair moves automatically like you're sitting up and they're gonna press some pedals and you're gonna end up with your legs in the air she didn't give me any warning like this is my first ever medical appointment in japan this is my first time at an obgyn and she just like swivels the chair and I end up with my legs in the air. <laughs> no warning whatsoever. 
if I had not known this in advance, I would have freaked out. I would have been like clutching the chair like what the fuck is happening, but yeah, she does that. Another thing that I had read is that there would be a curtain between me and the doctor for the patient not to feel embarrassed while the doctor is doing their thing down there for you. There was no curtain, which I'm used to in Belgium, but I was kind of like, why aren't you doing things the way I heard they were going to be? Anyway, um, I wasn't getting a very good vibe from this doctor and I think she's the head of the clinic because on the website that's her photo up there so like why aren't you doing like a good job representing your clinic why aren't you talking to me politely etc etc am i asking for too much is it because i'm a foreigner you're supposed to be like this foreigner friendly english clinic i don't get it anyway i can get over this i can Turn a blind eye, like waiting but us naked, the lack of politeness and bedside manner, it happens. What I cannot forgive is her starting the examination without any warning. Like, I am legs up, leaning back in this chair, completely vulnerable, she can see my everything, and she just puts the ultrasound stick, whatever you want to call it, she just puts it in without warning and I was so shocked first of all, it hurt I'm sorry you did not prepare me I'm not even sure if the thing was properly lubed she just put it in and started looking around and that's not okay I know I consented to the exam in the other room but I didn't consent to this I feel like so, so many women out there have unfortunately had a negative sexual encounter where they couldn't quite give consent. I'm not sure how to word this properly with as much sensitivity as I want, but there are so many women out there that have had a negative experience, and me included, and the way that she just started the exam without warning me, put something inside me without warning me, it brought me back to those moments and I almost started crying right there and I was like I'm not gonna give the woman the satisfaction of crying in front of her so I just bit my tongue and endured it and it felt very much like the other times where I had to endure it and that makes me so angry <laughs> that made that pissed me right off okay had to calm down there anyway she basically just said oh you have this did you know you didn't know oh okay we're just gonna do blood work and then you're done and like i didn't have any opportunity to ask questions like oh is this okay am i supposed to be worried about this what is it exactly should i get it checked nothing she just told me oh you have this so i did my blood work thankfully she did that very well and then she kind of just left and i was like in the blood exam area like in the hallway wondering if i if i should go back to reception what should i do am i am i waiting for something else i don't know i ended up going back to reception and i paid with the automatic paying machine and they told me to come back in a week to get my results i think i waited maybe two or three weeks before going back for my results again receptionist really nice i got the same doctor she was a little more open to conversation this time maybe i was a little more prepared so when she told me oh your blood work shows this we can try medication i was like okay what does this mean exactly what kind of medication do we need to get us do i need to get like another test or a second opinion all those kind of things but still it was very like the bare minimum that she gave me information wise is it always like this i don't know but i heard a lot of things about japanese doctors and japanese clinics that were not so good so maybe it falls in line with that if you are japanese and you completely disagree with what i'm saying please write it down in the comments i want to know other experiences i want to know if this is how it's supposed to be or if this is just a one-off thing so i'm gonna close this medical chapter 
for now I will not be going to that clinic ever again even though I'm supposed to come back in a month to see if the medicine changed anything oh, screw that I'm going somewhere else I'll figure it out this video is long enough as it is so if you're jumping back into the video after skipping the medical portion hi it's over now do you do you you take care of your mental health it's important and that's what the chapters are for so uh thank you for jumping back in i'm just gonna end the video now so <laughs> you're just in time for that um if you have any questions apart from the big thing i don't really have that many updates maybe little things that i've forgotten so feel free to ask questions in the comments and the dms if you want me to do a q a video like let me know but this is it so far this is the little in between chatty video until i finish editing the next vlog which is another exciting one it's a travel one but it's gonna take me forever to edit so <laughs> this is it for now anyway um video is hella long so thank you for watching sorry about the heaviness i went back and forth in my head about talking about it but you know what it's there the information is out there if you need it if you want it mm. okay <laughs> i'm gonna go now and try to relax and breathe so Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for being there. I appreciate you. You are loved, you are wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, lower your. Bye guys. <laughs>